right. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're still adjusting everything. It's going to take just a moment here. But um, do you want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about the game? Uh, sure. Though I don't think guys, uh, guys, text to us, do a um, Twitch chat if you can hear me or if you can't hear me. Yeah, the best way to do it is to keep talking and they'll keep yeah, giving us feedback. It's going to be, okay, yeah, gonna be about a minute okay. before. So, hi, um, my name is Megan Fox. I am the developer behind this game about jiggly boxes, which is called Hot Tin Roof. We had a Kickstarter last year. You may have seen pretty successful. Um, not like uh, Hyperlight Drifter successful, just, you know, normal successful. Um, yeah, I've been working on this since about uh, March, April, May of last year. Basically, right after Jones on Fire shipped and it didn't do so well at market, but it did really well critically. So, so mm -hmm. you, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a solid wall if they can hear me. So, we should be good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Can you see the game uh, yes. on Skype? Yep. Awesome. I'm watching the Twitch stream too. Cool. Right, yeah, but the Skype will definitely be more up to date as far as everything that's going on. All right, so. This is a special build that you sent me um, that has this, what I'm in currently is, what did you call it, the danger room? So yeah, the room you're in right now is kind of the testing room. I see you've already destroyed the, <laughs> the trash bags. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit. <laughs> it's, that's basically where I put all of the uh, testy, prototypey stuff just to see if it works or not. Oh, no, the trash bags are still there. Like that white thing you guys are seeing, the white box floating in the sky. That's a cobweb, or, well, it will be a cobweb. The idea is that whenever you fall through it, you get stuck in it, but if you were to pull up your revolver, pull up torch rounds, you could ignite it and burn it out of the way. Eventually, whenever you burn things, rather than them just burning, it'll actually ignite everything around it. So once that happens, the cobweb will kind of act like fuses, so you'll light one end and the cobwebs will burn in this nice procedural way and might ignite something else, yada, yada, yada. There's a bunch of other stuff that burns in the game, but for now it's just cobwebs and trash bags. That works. <laughs> the, the, the trash bags are kind of my Zelda pot right now. <laughs> I'll, awesome. I, I'll get something else before release. All right. So which one of these bullets is the fire one? The one with the red tip? The one with the red tip. Okay. I'm seeing in the chat someone's asking, is that a kitty? Yes. The little bouncy thing following you, her name is Frankie. That is your partner. Um, <laughs> if you play Jones on Fire, you spend the entire game running through a burning forest, rescuing cats. One of those cats, once you the uh, your, the fire bureau shuts down because of budget crunches, so you have to go into the city and find a new job. One of those cats follows you. Her name is Frankie, and now she's your partner. Uh, in game, she's kind of like your mobile crime lab. She's got uh, you know, well, she's cat senses, so she can. Tell things other people can't. You cool. can also use catnip rounds, which aren't in the game at all, to direct your attention. That's how you listen in on conversations. Where you'll like walk by a group of people, you'll see a little dot 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 chat bubble. They'll shut up when you get nearby. So you walk away from them. They start chatting again. You shoot a catnip round towards them. Frankie jets over there. Goes, oh, better listen. And uh -huh. that's that's kind of your your directional mic, I guess. You can also shoot catnip through a grating to have her go get a switch that you can't get, that kind of thing. What we're trying to do with that is just make Frankie into an actual character instead of a, a graphic that follows you around. Mm. I yes. certainly approve. I like that's it. Cool. I like that idea a lot. Oh, that's cool. All right. Um, all right. So I have successfully burned the garbage, which I don't know how good that is for the ozone. Um, it's horrible. <laughs> You can also burn the cobweb if you hold, if you, you can either let the fire drift up or you can hold it on the end of your gun by holding the trigger. I was wondering mm -hmm. about that actually. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah, I lit it on fire. There it goes. Hooray! Uh -huh. Yay! <laughs> um, all right, I'm going into the dark room with this too because I remember checking this out a little bit when I was testing this out to see if it worked. Very pretty. And then, uh, the coder asks, did she make Jones on Fire? Yes, I made Jones on Fire. I was the only 3D artist, the programmer, and the designer. I made it with Fulmer Kelly, who was the 2D artist who did the cool promo art and stuff. 
and Michael Nielsen and Nathan Madsen were the musicians and sound guys. Cool. That's awesome. So what should you be doing? Where, right. where should you be going? Yeah, actually, yeah, if you want to tell me what to show off in the game, I will happily oblige. Um, well, before you, uh, so, uh, pull up your revolver. All right, it's pulled up. It'll, All right. You'll be able to keep track of what's actually happening if you watch the one that we're sharing on Skype. Yep, uh, that's what I'm realizing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> switch, to, uh, go, switch the bullet right one. Okay, keep going right. Uh, it's one of the ones that has no tip. It's going to be like that one right there. Oh, okay. Load that one, and then load a couple of torch bullets. Okay, so one of those, and then two of these. Okay. Yeah. Whoop. Okay, just load up all the remaining chambers, really. And then rotate your cylinder so that your, uh, your you've, the, t the top one is a torch, and the next one is going to be a bubble. Perfect. Okay. okay. Now go into the dark room. Okay. Dark room. This is an example of how you might use the two things together. First, okay. what you're going to do is you're going to shoot the torch around and just let it drift up. So just, just click it. Don't hold it. Correct. Now shoot your bubble rounds to the right. Oh. Did I do it wrong? No, no, it just, the, the light went out before you had a chance. Basically, there's a clue in there sitting, I, th I think there's a clue in there, I think I took it out. But the gist is, you would use the torch rounds to throw up a flare, and then you would quickly use like bubble rounds or whatever to do your investigations in the dark room. Oh, I see, okay. Eventually, there would be light torches that you could light that permanently light an area or a light switch to find that kind of thing. But if you just want to show what the bubble, bubble rounds do in general, I know there are clues out in the lit area. Like, there's that. What are you doing? There's bubbles. Yeah, it, it, it's fine. There might there might not even be a clue in there. I might have taken that out already. Like, shoot some bubble rounds at that left chair your, that's to your right. Okay, hold on, let me load up this gun. I love the loading up the gun mechanic, the fact that that gives you most of the control. Yeah, we're, we're trying to focus most of the game. By the way, to the viewers at home, <laughs> the way this gun works is imagine uh, a PS3 or an Xbox controller, the left stick, so shoot some bubbles at the leftmost chair. Okay. Okay, wait, we can do. What are you doing? Oh, I can show that I'm using a controller? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh. Let me turn off the silly lighting. Yeah, so to. Oh, What are you doing? I clicked over here. You, Good. You, Good. you, you deselected the screen. Good job, Calvin. Sorry. <laughs> um, Alright, so you want me to shoot bubbles? I can't because you told me to do something over there. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> but anyhow, I'm using both of these sticks when I'm, when I'm pulling up the gun. There's a button that lets you pull up the gun. And then using this stick, um, this one, this actually lets me cycle through which type of bullet I'm using. And there's like a grappling hook bullet and like all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and then this one, it also, this is also the one that lets you aim it afterwards. Did you yep. reset? Yeah. Awesome. The gist so. is that the left stick when you're in the reload mode kind of controls the gun in your hand and the right stick controls the bullet in your hand. The idea is I'm trying to get the sense of you're holding the gun in one hand opening the cylinder and using the other hand to put the bullets in. I'm doing everything I can with the design. Yeah, see, you'll, you'll see this in a sec, viewers. She shot some bubbles at the chair and then a clue reveals. This is kind of like your scanning visor. This is how you do investigation. There are hidden clues in the world that you can shoot bubbles at and it reveals them. That's one of the ways in which you'll find secrets. Uh, a lot of things, basically anything can be revealed that way. That could reveal hidden doors, that could make an item interactable it wasn't before it could clean off dirt that reveals you know whatever that's the gist of it. just think metroid scanning visor that's really but the cool. uh, idea with revolver is just that i'm trying to make it as kinesthetic as possible one of the goals with the the reason i've gone to such depth in depth here is i'm trying to make a game about a gun that has nothing to do with killing people i mean mm -hmm. you literally cannot shoot and kill anyone in the game the most you can do is stun them momentarily and most of the time you'll be doing things like dropping chandeliers on their head or gumming them up in a gum wad or 
blinding them or something else like that. You can eventually comically light them on fire with the torch rounds, oh, no. but that doesn't kill them, that just distracts them. Because I love it. fire is very distracting. Yeah, it would be. That's awesome. I, um, I definitely like that the gun is not like some lethal weapon and that's what it's used for. I think that's and awesome. There's, there's a question just noticing, an X input only for controller support? Uh, no, it supports basically any controller on any OS. This is PC Mac Linux. So far I've tested it on PC with an Xbox controller and a PS3. On the OS X, it's way easier to use a PS3 controller, so that's what I'm using right now. The one thing you're going to run into is, because it supports so many controllers, I haven't found a good way of creating a default button binding for everything. Yep. So you're going to have to sit down, open the bind view, and bind up whatever gamepad you are using. But it yeah. supports basically anything. We have that issue with our game, too. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've con we support every controller, and therefore... Therefore, you know, we can't nothing, set any controller nothing schemes works for by everybody. Default. Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky thing. You got to do one or the other. Either you you're only supporting a, a, like two controllers, or you're you know you can support everybody. Wow, that was cool. Exactly. Grappling hook. That was the grappling hook. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, if you want to just go into the level, just push down. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking. I think we should probably show them what you've actually got for real gameplay because this is special. This isn't the actual. Like this isn't the game. This is just like a playroom that you yeah. put together. All right. So yep. my up and down are backwards. We did it wrong. <laughs> this is basically a demo. So if you've seen Let's Plays of this before, you're going to see basically the same thing you've already seen. There's some things different. The art's a little different, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know. Alright. Press B. My ears work fine, Chief. I, I love the dialogue in this. The just like the way everything is. is you won't want to say this. Go left. Say that one. Yeah. The dialogue. Uh, I'm doing most of the writing. Michael Neal's playing a lot with the design too, but I've done at least here. I've done most of everything. Uh, awesome. Yeah, basing it on. Obviously, it's very, very law inspired. <laughs> a lot of uh, oh, hard. You're breaking up. I'm going to actually stop sharing so that we get yeah, more Yeah, your voice bandwidth. is starting to break up for some reason, so we're going to try not screen sharing for a bit, see if he's come through clearer. Okay, is that better? Yeah, since yeah so far, that seems so to be better. Okay. You need to restart um, the game. Okay. You're just doing the demo anyway, so yeah. if you have specific questions, ask me, otherwise I'll just watch the live stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, the dialogue is obviously inspired as a kind of hard-boiled angle. Uh, before I started these two games, I was a detective novel, which was a super cool detective novel. It just gave me an excuse to about that, which was a lot of fun. You're breaking up pretty badly there. Mm -hmm. Still? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it might be on your side. We were hoping it was on ours and we could do something about it. Uh oh. Um, but we do we do hear most of what you're saying. Huh. Um, sorry. That's no fun. Let me, let me see if there's anything I can do to clean this up. Let's see. Uh, so, um, okay. So I just turned on the video, so now you can see me. That might have Skype to go better. Yes, maybe. No. We can, we can see you. We can see Are you. Breaking up audio wise. Yeah. You're still yeah, a little out. bit. I don't know why. That's really weird. Huh? Yeah, it, like it suddenly it just goes to work, and then is somebody else in there like uploading something big? Some sort of huge I file going somewhere. I don't think so. Because you were Should fine be. before, and then it suddenly, suddenly got weird. All right, I'm gonna use my gun, and I can use the special bullets in the demo too, right? Uh, or do yeah. they not work? No, no, they'll okay. work fine. Um, the, the demo was not built to assume, that, so you could break things, but it should. But if should. I if I burn the garbage instead of shooting it, it should be okay. Oh yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. Just didn't want to, you know, break your game live. That's never fun. Yeah, if you do, you do. <laughs> yeah. So, as far as development goes on this, how far along are you? Like, when do you think it's going to be closer to finished? And well, how much more do you have to add? I'm just we've been in full-time dev on this since the Kickstarter. The holidays slowed us down. 
more than I would have liked. They always do. They and always do. Ah, this Christmas will be different, and it's never different. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably about a month behind schedule. Where else would be right now? I had to back out of PAX East to kind of um. budget to extend. Mm. But that's why I have flex built into the schedule because you know things like this are going to happen. Right. So right now, we're probably looking at the date of maybe Mayish. Hopefully, it won't slip any further than that. But I don't know. It'll it'll depend on how things go. So right now, May seems like a likely. Time. There's nothing between here and then that'll really cause any problems. Awesome. That's that's not bad. That's that's fairly quick, actually. Like, um. I don't know. Well, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, we very consciously... I mean, if you, if you tell anyone in the industry that you are making a content-driven game, which, by the way, content-driven for viewers at home, that means a game driven by, you know, static levels and static dialogue and go here, do this. Kind of that linear structure as opposed to procedural, like, uh, Minecraft or Binding of Isaac or whatever. Right. Everyone says don't do content driven as an indie because it takes a lot of time. We have very consciously made this a short game. We're not trying to go all triple A, 20 hour, expensive, epic plot. I know this is a, this will end up being about six hours long. It'll be a relatively short game, but it's going to be a really good six hours instead of, you know, 10 hours that end up being really anemic towards the end or That's there's not much to do. Yeah, that's a smart way to do I, it. That's I really like that good. a lot. That's good. I also really like that this bathroom has two toilets right next to each other with no dividers, and that the yes. cat comes right in with you. It is a very public bathroom. <laughs> that's wonderful. Is there any secrets in the bathroom that I should try to find? Not yet. Oh, I hope there will be, because that will make me very happy. There is in the game. It's not in the demo. We do actually have a poop animation, which will be turned <laughs> to interact with toilets, but I have time to get it hooked up. It's really <laughs> awesome. They squeeze down and they kind of jerk back. And oh no! Right. That sounds awesome. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know. know. I've always liked games. I grew up with Ultima 7. That was kind of what got me into the industry. And that's where the term, can you, can you bake bread, comes from, which is basically that catch-all, how interactive is the game world. Right. That's always what I really enjoyed. So stuff like using toilets, turning on the sink, uh, stuff that you want the character to comment on in some way. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put a lot of that in there. Awesome. But without... In one, in one of the early designs, I had a lot of interactive stuff that you would like to look, at, look for text descriptions, which I like because old games used to do that. It's fun, but it was a lot of stuff that was annoying other players. So I, I'm trying tone down the textual detail, but ramp up the actual interactive detail. That's if cool. you go down down in that door, that takes you into the next area. Yeah, I just went there. Awesome. Exploring now. Yeah, sorry. Should we try stream screen sharing again so she can keep track of exactly where we are so it doesn't seem to make a difference? <laughs> Cause, uh, oh, I could go into the alleyway there too. Oh, where should I go? I'm liking the outside. I actually... I haven't spent that much time on the outside part of it here because most of my time was spent um, inside of that little demo room. Yeah. So I, I like the way the outside looks a lot. This is kind of iteration two on the exterior art. This may be as far as we take the style. This may be just what we work run, run with. It may go further. It depends on, this is one of those things where if we had a larger team, I would keep iterating on it. But since we have a small team, we have to focus the time where it makes sense. I am really happy with the general tech of how you can go down the alleyway and how, as you walk around that corner, like you just did, the, the, the view shifts. It's gonna let us make really, really explorable environments. So, like, it. like uh, in Metroid, or actually a Shadow of the Complex is a great recent example. It is really explorable so much as you look at the map, which is arranged in cubes, and you find the cube you can't get to, and you know there's a secret there. Mm. I hate that. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do with this is, I mean, yes, it's a side scroller, but it's a side scroller in which I can have actual honest to goodness secrets because it's a side scroller that you work through a 3D environment in. There was a, uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brain fart on it. There was a PS1 platformer that was about a caveman, and you got different hats. 
Is this ringing any bells? Does chat know what I'm talking about? Oh. Come on. There was like the, the wizard hat, like the ice wizard hat. Do you know what, what it is, Kelvin? Sounds familiar. Oh, man. I'm so bad with the names of anything, pretty much. Well, maybe one of them will mention it. If they do, I'll point it out. But still, one of the things they did, this was back in PS1 era, so mid-90s, they had, you would go to a crossroads and you would kind of get to choose if you want to go up or down. And depending on which way you chose there, it was kind of like, um, kind of like a train track uh, junction. You, you, the camera would rotate, now you'd be on a new side. Tomba! It's Tomba 2! Tomba. Oh, oh yeah. savage. Ho, 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 nice. Okay. So I think it's Tomba. I'm almost positive that's the one. No, well, it's not Adventure Time. <laughs> Adventure Time is way more recent. Good, good show. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> no, uh, so, yeah, so they, they had a crossroads where you could go to a crossroads and, and change the camera. So I'm not, I'm far from the first one to do this, but not many people are exploring it. It bugs me, so I wanted to try and see what I could do with it. And obviously you're in another chunk of dialogue here. Um, one thing to be aware of, so the interior of this environment is a little bit placeholder in places, a little bit not. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue bubbles we're still working on. Those are all the first gen programmer art ones. Where the idea with um, the dialogue selection bubble, the green bubble, that'll eventually be more like a thought bubble. And then when you select the thought bubble, well, you'll actually say the line as an actual dialogue bubble, and then there'll be a little A, and then they'll respond, and then your thought bubble will come up. I so like that. it's a little more interactive. The other weird thing is right now you can get kind of stuck in dialogue where you'll get three layers in, and you'll get to one that loops, unless you pick a certain dialogue option, which is usually the rightmost, which gets you back a layer. We need to make that a lot clearer. Mm. Um, yeah, no, but it's still, it's functional right now, and since you're in development, that totally works, you know. It's, you get what you are trying to get done for the moment. But I like the sound of it, the making it clear how to exit the conversation. Yeah, probably end up having some kind of, if you mash the cancel button, you will always select the one that gets you out, or if you hold the cancel button, or something like that, we'll see. But yeah, the... Amount of dialogue in this demo is pretty representative of what I want in most areas. Um, oh, another thing this demo was is kind of but not really showing. There is going to be a time of day system. We got we got just enough money to to take a stab at the stretch goal, which means NPCs will be here for dinner, then they'll go home, then they'll go to work the next day, yada yada. We're okay. probably going to have a single day loop, so no uh, uh, Majora's Mask three day loop, just <laughs> one day. But that means we'll be able to have uh, so and so and so and so go behind the bar at nine o'clock at midnight or nine o'clock to midnight to talk about secret stuff. And if you're there at the right time, you can witness that conversation. Maybe you send in Frankie with some catnip so she can listen in. Oh, and then that's God. how you might find a side quest, which is kind of that part is extremely Majora's Mask inspired. Mm. So secrets in space and time, I guess, is the way of explaining it. Cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Being in the right place at the right time is a lot of what detective work is about, too. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. The downside is it's probably going to mean the game is somewhat... <laughs> trying to communicate that to a player in a clear fashion without simplifying it to nothing is kind of impossible. So this will be a game that Either characters will end up, or players will end up using a walkthrough a lot of the time if they're not very good at this kind of thing, maybe. Or we're going to build a hint system into the into the journal, and some players are just going to have to swallow their pride and look at the hint that says, "Have you tried going here at 5 p.m. at whatever?" Right, whatever. right, right. So we'll do our best there, but I want to make sure that however we simplify things for the player doesn't simplify the actual act of being a detective and doing detectiving assuming you want to take it, take the hardcore route and not look up any walkthroughs. I don't want this to be, um, what's the most recent example I can think of? Oh, right, Assassin's Creed 4, which I was playing earlier. <laughs> As I'm trying to figure out a solution to a puzzle, and it's not that hard a puzzle, I just hadn't climbed into the right place yet. Kenway starts mouthing off about, well, if I got up here and did this, ha ha ha. And then my sidekick starts mouthing off, and then there's a dialogue pop-up that says, Hey, have you fucking tried this? It, it destroyed the, the puzzle. And all I, I, all I did to get this was, 
I had the audacity to take more than 30 seconds to solve it. <laughs> it it's, oh, it's so irritating. Yeah. Oh, man. So we're not going to have that. The hints in this game, there'll be, they'll be there, but you'll have to... By the way, um, let's see. After you leave this dialogue, press start. Or press your menu button. We're done here. We're done here. There we go. That's how I get out of the dialogue. And then... So escape or start or whatever you've got to bound to. So right now, that obviously is just your menu bind system. But if you look as it opens, it actually says case notes on the cover. This is going to be kind of the core of the menu system. One of these pages will basically be dedicated to active quests. And whenever you select the active quest, the rule is you will always have at least one quest active by simple virtue of not having beaten the game yet. <laughs> that will always have some kind of hint in it that points you in the right direction. We might even do... If anyone remembers the universal hint system from back in the Sierra Adventure days, they had this concept where the hints were multi-stage, so you would press, press I need a hint, and it would give you a very general hint. You mm -hmm. press it again, and more specific, then you press it again, and it just says, do this. We might even add that kind of system just so that you can look at the journal and not be immediately spoiled, or at least get a pointer without having it totally ruined for you. Mm -hmm. Just whatever we can do so that there is a system there to help you with this, but it's minimized to the side and only go there if you want to go there. The other thing you might notice is that all of the UI is 3D. We don't have much in the way of, you know, screen overlays and crap like that. We will probably keep this system throughout everywhere. Like, there will eventually be a time of day indicator, we'll need one. That will be an actual pocket watch that hangs from the right hand corner. There awesome. will be no just text overlay. There will always be something in view which would realistically have the text on it. So for a journal, the journal has writing on it. The writing changes, but it's still a 3D journal. I a mean, clock is how you tell time. Uh, I'm a huge fan of that kind of, uh, of GUI. Yeah. Non-GUI. Yeah. Having it be something in the game itself yeah. instead of floating over it, kind of, so to speak. Exactly. That's cool. Oh, it's dark. I should probably get a light bullet here. Torches! They're called torches. Right. We need to <laughs> that better. So, one thing is, in this screen right now, the bullet, or sorry, the gun itself is basically final art. I like the animation. I like mm. the little clicky and all that. It's very cool. The bullet side is way too simplistic. We need, we're going to add a, um, probably, if you remember Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, they did a really good job of personifying all of the ammo types and weapon types with um, different uh, posters and, and fence and advertisement language and all that. It's very period specific. We're going to do the same thing with the bullets. It's already in the design doc. But we're probably going to have like a box of bullets as opposed to just one that has the nice posterish image on it that indicates what it is and who makes it and yada yada. Cool. That company will actually exist in the world somewhere, even if it's just as a false wall that happens to have some doors you can't use on it, it'll exist somewhere. But basically, that screen needs that kind of detail, but again, we're going to add that kind of detail without having floating text that says torch bullets. It'll be something more embedded. I like it. That's, that's that's the way to go. I like I like creative ways of like inherently knowing what it's supposed to be without being just blatantly told. Keeps the huh. immersion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. want to talk to a cat. This is my favorite. This cat is also the place where you, the dirtiest dialogue in the entire demo right now. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to survive because of what he says here. Uh oh. What have we done? What have we, what uh -oh. have we done, what, sh what should we do? <laughs> uh oh. No, she's that one, you know. Oh my. That line, right there. That line. Oh, ho, ho. Get me, <laughs> a, a, not a, maybe a chur, a teen, I don't know. That's a little bit higher than the rating I probably want. Yeah. <laughs> Raises it right up with just one one word. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Which isn't really a big deal, but in a game that's about jiggly boxes that look a heck of a lot like something that came out of Veggie Tales, <laughs> I'm trying to walk that line of 
I want to write a game for adults that's, well, for everyone. It has adult themes. But since a lot of the players from John's on Fire, like over the uh, holidays, I ran into the grandfather a couple of huge Jones on Fire fans, and they totally freaked out that their dad knew me. And, uh -huh. But they're kids, and they love this game. And I want uh -huh. to make sure that the game I'm making now, they can play without, you know, maybe running across a line like that. Everything else this cat does, as far as implication and uh, the leering, I I'm okay with all of that. Just, I need to tone it down on the language and be a little more mindful of audience and yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. Gonna do like they do with uh, Pixar films and things like that where it's for kids and then there's a little bit of a like it's adult for adults humor and, it, and it's for kids top. but they're layered in a way that it doesn't affect kids don't get affected. Exactly. Yeah. There'll be a lot more and that's more clever anyways. The yeah. pussy line I wrote it when I was like eleven it was it was midnight, I was tired. I thought it was funny. It is okay but you can get a lot more clever with it, and then okay with it, and then adults go, "Oh, it's it's better writing." This was lazy writing. <laughs> it happens. You, you have to yeah. fill the boxes somehow, and go, you, that's why it's not finished yet. It's because you haven't finished it. Mm -hmm. so oh, it another thing to look at at this is notice how all of the dialogue lines that come from Frankie emit from Emma, which is why I had to make them the the exclamation point things. Mm. In the final game, the dialogue system will be capable of originating dialogue from anyone in a conversation. So you might have a conversation with three people, you and Frankie, and you might get to pick Frankie's lines as well, which would emit from Frankie. Cool. So it won't be as A, B, A, B, A, B as it is in this demo. It will be a little more interactive. And if anyone noticed the outside of this was painted with a door, which is now knocked off on the inside, yes, I realize. That's a discount. No, we'll, we'll fix that. <laughs> yep, that works. Is, does that mean that you're probably going to get to kick down that door, or? Uh, no, this is this is part of the crime scene as it is. Ah, okay, cool. It's just that whenever the artists did the external texture, I didn't make it clear that that door was be knocked in. Mm, gotcha. This is also the scene where crime, uh, Frankie as your crime detection system kind of thing, your, your crime, by looking for crime kit, murder kit, uh, your, your clue finding thing, your... Right, the, the bubbles. What, what is it? Um, oh, the journal? The... No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a specific word. Oh, okay. It's not coming. It'll come. <laughs> I don't want to play through and go through all the options because I think everybody should be able to explore all this stuff on their own eventually. Oh, it's dark in here. Oh no, oh, it's this room. I see. And if you go into the restroom in there, special music plays, which I wanted to have played in the other restroom too, but it didn't have time before PAX. All right, I'm totally going in there right now. Let's see what this music is. It's just music, but... <laughs> it's bathroom music. Yes. <laughs> there was elevator music, and that's basically what it is. But yeah. well, okay. th there will be stuff like that. That's one of these. Th there is actually a seat in this demo you have not found yet. That wasn't it. Ooh. But yeah, that's minor details, minor little nods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I like it. That's awesome. So, so are there places where I should be using this bubble gum or no. anything? No. Like I said, the, the for, as far as this PAX demo goes, literally the only bullets that you had available were thuds, which were only used for shooting the trash bags, right. knockbacks, which you're about to find, and um, the other ones. Oh, that's right. There, there used to be blanks in the game, which I thought was funny because I'm a firearms person and it was cool, but no <laughs> understood what a blank was, so I took them out. Oh, that's too bad. Oh. Well, but I, yeah, no, it, it was understandable. Yeah. Again, it goes back to that kinesthetic thing. It's like, the demo you're playing right now, the original one had buttons for advanced cylinder, regress cylinder, and if you push them both at the same time, it spun the cylinder. Mm -hmm. The idea with all of that was that you could point your gun at someone, 
spin a cylinder and play Russian roulette with them as oh. a way to take information out of them. <laughs> oh, I like it. The whole purpose of the blanks was so that you could do this without shooting them because I didn't want you to shoot anyone. But it eventually became clear that the system was... It, it's very um, combative. It's not a combative is the wrong word. It, it, it they veers more in the direction of guns used to kill people, since you're threatening them with death, since why else they're reacting. And then once you've got that, alongside a game where it's literally impossible to kill anyone, why are they threatened by your gun? Because to that, they know Emma doesn't shoot anyone or kill anyone, so why on earth do they think that you're going to? And it, it, it broke down in a lot of ways. It was an example of a system I had in there because I had simulated a revolver to the nines, and I it was awesome that it could do Russian roulette, but mm -hmm. this isn't really the game for that system, so I cut it out. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, keeping the controls as simple as possible, sometimes you lose some of the cool features that you could put in, even if they're just for fun, um, and add a little bit of an interesting little side thing that you can do. Sometimes you have to lose it, otherwise people get confused. Yep. We're at that point in design where we're Crime tech. She is your crime tech. I think that's the word from CSI. <laughs> crime tech. Yeah, sure. Well, crime scene tech. Yeah, there we go. We'll go with that. Point is, she's the one that can smell gunpowder residue. She's the ones that can look for gun residue and all of that. And that's one part of her character. Another part of the character is she's able to listen in on conversations and just everywhere we can, creating that... Uh, creating the characterization that she is a person instead of just a thing that follows you around. She's also involved in the plot in a very big way towards the end. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah. Kind of, the the overall goal with her is to essentially create a buddy cop movie. Or, or game, in this case. <laughs> but a buddy, buddy cop noir movie, I'm not sure if that ever existed. <laughs> but basically, that's what it is. A buddy cop, a buddy cop noir movie where, you're where your partner is a, is a cat, cat. Yeah. yes which is awesome yeah. definitely a fan well, that's one of the many reasons we packed this on kickstarter actually so well thank you oh and viewers at home will note that frankie is in fact wearing a little fedora the fedora in this world the brown fedora specifically saying hat is like saying badge they're a hat, they're a badge, they're a police officer. Mm. That she has a brown fedora. She is the only cat in this environment, or in this world, that can wear a brown fedora. She is the first to have graduated to being a private investigator. That's cool. There is another trainee in the game who's not quite reached that level yet, so she can wear a brown hat, but she's not in this demo. Another cat. But Frankie is the only private investigator that's a cat. And there's actually an overplot, kind of an over theme, where <clears throat> cats in this world tend to be villains. They don't tend to be good people. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of racism uh, focused against cats. Oh, there's also um, a church organization which is run by, uh, run by cats trying to show that cats can be good people. But they are prejudiced against pigeons because pigeons come from eggs. And I want churches like our, our holy mothers of the sacred womb, I think it is. And they're, the, the point is they're biased against pigeons because they come from eggs and not the womb. So pigeons are like the ultimate underclass in this world, and that's why they're mostly Julies. There's, I think, one pigeon in the final game that's actually a good person who's trying to buck stereotype. And even she's involved in some shady dealings because there's just not much to do for pigeons in this world that's not shady dealings. The point of all of this being that there are a lot of themes going on behind the scenes that I'm touching on racism or I'm touching on uh, other things you might have seen in noir movies without actually being literal racism. Like everyone is black in this game because why not? In every other game, everyone's white and I'm tired of white people. <laughs> yeah. We've had, we've had enough white people stories. Let's try something else. But I like I that. But since noir does touch on racism in a lot of cases, I wanted some way of bringing those themes in. But since I don't really want literal racism, the uh, speciesism was a way of bringing that in. And I think also, it's an awesome, very, it's a very gentle way of kind of having it in the game it. and being able to discuss it in yeah. a sense. 
Yeah, and again, that goes back to the making it friendly for kids while there's themes for adults. Mm -hmm. Kids get what I'm talking about, but I'm not being up in their face about it, and I'm not being overly, uh, whatever. It, it's it's not meant to be a major thing. Right now, to advance in the demo, you would have to investigate the door, which I think you've already done, and notice that it was sheared off its hinges. Oh, I don't think I did that part. Okay, I should probably if do that. If you find okay. all of the clues in that room back there, you will eventually get a audio cue from Emma that tells you what to do next. Oh. Okay, so I need to go back in there. The arrows are too white, make them black. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure if that's <laughs> racism talk or if it was just a happy accident, but well played. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Apparently, Moskville is tired of white people, too. <laughs> Moskville is one of the people who's going to be doing guest streaming later on. It's awesome ah. that he's actually here hanging out. This door was blown inward. Maybe this is the question that I missed. Yeah. Uh, and this is why I invest, added the bubble rounds and a couple of other things. There is a loop where you have to find a bunch of clues, then the case advance, and then you do some platforming, and then there's a boss fight. And there's this kind of overall loop. But in this demo, since none of that mechanic was done, all of the clue finding is dialogue hunts. And those aren't <laughs> fun. So we're working on ways of making clue finding more entertaining than going through every dialogue option in a room. Right, right. Cool. No, I think I think the dialogue hunts are definitely an important part to kind of keep that feel because the way the dialogue happens is like I don't know, I like I like the words that you're choosing to use and the way they talk to each other and everything. It definitely creates a lot more atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Well, the dialogue is cool and I want to the the, di the goal with the dialogue is to have a lot of backing detail to the world and a lot of that's told in dialogue. But I want the dialogue to be not optional, but if you want to just play the game and mostly avoid the dialogue, there will be a shallow path you can take that gets you what you need and then you move on your way. If you want to dive deep on the dialogue, then you just go talk to more people and there's optional people that have nothing to do with the rest of the game, but you can talk to them and find out all kinds of detail about their lives and the world. All of that should be there, but I don't want the player to be like this, where they're they're making sure they've toggled every single dialogue option to make sure they get all of the dialogue done. I'm also Keys. accidentally hitting... I'm not I'm not the best video game player and I'm accidentally hitting the wrong button at the wrong time and going through the... See, I could just did that. I'm, there we go. Okay, I'm good. I'm done inspecting the door. Walk away quickly. I'm going to press more buttons. It was dangerous. Oops, that's the normal gun. Oh, hey! Someone mentioned, reminds me a bit of Grim Fandango. Ah. Yes, I loved Grim Fandango when I was growing up. Um, well, growing up, yeah, yeah, I was back. Yeah, I was growing up. Um, there might be the uh, the other thing I I've always loved is um, the uh, Monkey Island games mm. were awesome. Both of those were strong influences here. Obviously, the only other noir game I can really think of is Grim Fandango, so that's an obvious comparison. I don't really want to ape the game, but obviously I enjoyed it and it exists. The Grim Fandango, or sorry, the, uh, the like I said, there are no bubbles. The, the, the bubble stuff doesn't do anything in this world because it was built before the bubbles existed. I know, but it's still fun to to imagine that it could happen, I guess. True. And that's what the game will actually look like when you're looking for clues. You'll shoot some bubbles, you'll talk to some things, you'll look at some stuff. Instead of the door just being there, it might be that you shoot the door with levels and then a clue reveals itself and then you investigate the clue mm -hmm. and then there's a little bit of dialogue of you and Frank figuring it out so that it's not just dialogue. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Yeah, because cause getting to really, like, I guess it's sort of like getting your hands dirty, but in the game, like, you really get involved in the in the actual finding of the clues. There is a giant coin up on that fire escape. That is the secret. How do I get there? Oh, man. I keep staring at it and going like, <laughs> what do I do? So I certainly can't jump that high. That's over around the corner. It's behind that. Door. It's, it's, 
Okay. I'm seeing a lot of questions about dogs in the chat's view. Uh, there are no dogs in the world of Hot Tin Roof. Dogs are an unknown species. Wow. Consider like bringing dogs in in the future as an alien race. Just because someone made the point back when I worked on Jones on Fire that it was kind of odd that I chose cats instead of the obvious choice of a Dalmatian dog. Honestly, I just never thought about it. I just made it because the art was easier and then I ran with it. But the further I go in this series without a single dog, it seems like I ought to have something dog-like eventually. <laughs> nah, who needs dogs? You got cats. Cats are cool. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> a cat person is the thing. I'm actually a dog person. That's but interesting. I ended up making a game in a world about cats because well, cats are awesome too. Mm. Oh, and the cat will eventually stop bouncing. The fact that she's always bouncing right now is because she's not technically an animated character. She is a character playing an animation. Oh. So I had to pick one animation that worked all the time. And the bouncy one was <laughs> the closest to working. That makes sense. Uh-oh. I broke it. Wow, you did. Mm-hmm. You will have to restart the demo. Yep. Though I can walk you through the steps to advance the plot. Mm. Yeah. If this game gets dogs, it loses all of the charm this game has. Yes. I agree, Logbia. Yeah. Okay, picked it right back up. Cool. That worked. I'm back here. Um, we actually we have about what, ten ten more minutes. Of showing this off. Um, oops, let me answer this phone real quick. Pardon me. Um, but if there's, oops. I'll just walk you through the steps to advance the plot. Basically, start by going starting the actual demo. Yep. I'm. I've answered the phone. I'm about to leave the apartment or apartment, the office here. Um, so what you need to do is make a beeline to the back room of the slice of pie. You need to investigate the door and get the dialogue cue about looks like these hinges were cl sheared clean off. Could you do this? No, I couldn't. Blah, blah, blah. That's the dialogue option you, you need to go through. Okay. Once you've done that, you can go back into the depot and then you'll hear Emma Q chime in. Oh, okay. So I didn't, I, my problem was I didn't go back into the depot. Okay. I need to go in Dad here. Always pats your shoulder as he walks by. I knew there'd be a body in the next Is there going to be a lot of, um, because I'm hearing, there's like, every once in a while you have an actual person talking, you have a, a voice actor. The voice actress, um, her name is actually Emma Messenger, ironically. <laughs> she voices Emma. That is the only, so yeah, the inspector door. Oh, right, right, the door. Um, Emma, Emma, sorry, Emma Messenger, Emma, <laughs> Emma Jones, is the only character that has a voice in the game. So the only voice you'll ever hear is kind of the hard-boiled narration, which she'll chime in talking about the world or the plot or giving you hints on where to go next. Kind of, um, if anyone has ever seen Blast of Silence, which is probably my favorite Milan movie of all time, by the way, if you haven't, you need to see it. It's really good. Uh, the whole movie is, um, uh, is it Frankie? It's Frankie. Anyways, he talks over the entire movie, kind of <laughs> what he's doing and explaining to himself, talking to himself, and there's a lot of that there. That's, you're going to get a lot of that here. Okay, once you've done that, head back to the depot. Okay, I'm in the depot. So who do I need to talk to? Did you hear the dialogue option saying something? I didn't hear the sheared off part. I got to that. Oh, no, I mean, when you went in to the depot, did you hear... Emma chime in with narration? Yes. yes. Okay, so yeah, head upstairs. Go to the right. Ah, oh, okay. Take the stairs up to the right, go into the chief's office on the second floor, and talk to the chief. Oops, I'm not pointing the gun the top of it. What am I doing? Where's my gun? There it is. Uh-oh. 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 Why can't I shoot these? Use the burning bullets. Ah, I'll use the burning bullets. No, you can bullets. use just uh, the let's do. You can also technically jump over them if you're close and you just jump to the right, which might be easier. All right. Oh, there's probably a thing in the way there that's preventing that. That's yeah. like, yeah, use the burning bullets. They work. 
obviously this is a early prototype please do not judge the final quality of the game it's <laughs> not additional bug seen here All right, so I go up the stairs. Up the stairs, second floor, first door on your left. Go talk to the chief, ask the chief about the case. Oh, hello chief. Case. Case, name, job, depot, vacation, gotta go chief. I guess I'll talk to them about the case. And you can also sit there and insult the chief for a while, but since we're running out of time, I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> Most of, almost every dialogue chain with the chief ends with him telling you to get out of his office. <laughs> of course, he's the chief. That's what, that's what they do. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it's, he's pretty much the chief. <laughs> I like it. No one actually knows what the chief's name is. That's a side plot to figure out what the chief's name is and what he does when he's not in the office. I like that try to find out because because you just keep calling him chief exactly <laughs> awesome mm -hmm. so as far as like this this demo if i was actually paying attention to trying to actually play the game instead of you know talking to you um how long like would it take probably like an hour for this demo for people to play if they're like going through everything if they were going through everything, I've seen it take upwards of an hour. Mm. Practically speaking, most people seem to get through it in about a half hour. Uh, obviously, if you know what you're doing, you get through it in like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Cool. Um, and so basically the demo is just like one tiny chapter of what the actual game would be like. Exactly. Uh, the actual game doesn't begin like this. I don't know how much of this will actually be in the final game. Interesting. Interesting. So this, this is kind was, of... Oh, go ahead. No, oh, I'm just going to ask you what this was then. <laughs> so go this ahead. This was originally going to be part of the plot. I ended up writing a lot of it out because whenever I wrote the rest of the plot, this part didn't connect very well. I might turn this into a side quest kind of thing. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not too attached to it, though. Cool. And then, yeah, th this is one of those dialogues you tend to get stuck in. Go to the far right, and then far right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, what do I do once I get out of the office? Go down to the first floor again, go far left. Okay. To the door at the other end of the hallway that used to be locked. Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, Mosquil asks, um, with all the praise of the comparable series, do I smell some Sam and Max influence? Oh, Mr. Deb. Well, first of all, I'm Mrs. Sorry about my voice. I, no, I, I have a sore throat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's obviously some Sam and Max influence. Not a ton. Uh, I played, I, I played Sam and Max when I was older, but I didn't really grow up with it. So, obviously I played it and it's fun and I've enjoyed it, but... It wasn't one of the main influences, believe it or not. Except that, oh, my computer just shut down. Well, that's obnoxious. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, hey, cool. We can hear you. <laughs> Am I supposed to go down or up at the doors? There's lots of different places I can the go. Shop floor broke oh, yep. like a two day so and just keep going down. I guess construction down and then across nice. and then. The floor is all broken down here. Jump it. I'm scared. Oh. Jump. Go in there. This detective office is pretty run down over here. Mm -hmm. Knockback rounds. Knockback rounds. What? So now I have knockback rounds? You do. And now, if you were actually in this demo the way it was designed to be played, you wouldn't have grapples right now. So the only way to get out of this hole would be to use the knockback rounds in some way. Ah, I see. So I have to load up these knockback rounds. Minding that you don't accidentally load up bubble rounds because the two look identical. Oh yeah, I'm yep. seeing that. I think it's this one? Worst comes to worst, you shoot bubbles. I might just shoot bubbles and jump into a hole if it's right. possible. We'll find out. Let's 
to make sure I'm actually using the right one. Okay. You keep on switching here. Okay. I got it. It's good. Right. You stop paying attention to me and you like talk to people in the chat room or something. I Find good questions. Chat room. You have good questions. I meant in text. Calvin, you no. should be the rebel. Yeah. Sorry. You're fired. I know. All right. Here we go. All right. So let's see if I can. I also like that. Even though like the way that the character walks is very it's kind of linear, like you can either go in the door or you can go here. But with the gun you have the full three sixty control over where you aim it. Mm-hmm. So if I shoot like this. <laughs> so it's like a jump. Go down. Oh, I shoot up. Calvin. Do it. No, you're fired. Don't listen to you. You'd be too slow. Wait, so if I Jump first and then fire. Oh, I have to also be dexterous enough to. Is that the? Am I going about this even remotely close to the proper way here? <laughs> um, the stream. I'm still watching the live stream, so you're kind of lagged compared to. But basically, you need to shoot down whilst jumping to the side. That's what I'm trying to do here. Controls are. A little bit I may have jump to the side shoot down yeah you need to keep moving to the yeah. side as you shoot down yeah. okay. and you can shoot multiple times to get yourself ready ah! Got it! I feel very accomplished sorry <laughs> randomly yelling <laughs> sorry. I love the voice for the viewers at home, this is kind of the kind of puzzle, one of the kinds of puzzle you can expect. There will be relatively little in the game that's likely to kill you unless you really go about things the wrong way. <laughs> Most of the puzzles will be things that you can sit back, think about for a moment, plan, and then execute. And if you execute wrong, you might get shot in the face and you lose some, there, there will be a heart system kind of like Zelda and yada yada yada. So you might lose some damage, it gets damaged, but in general, there will always be a place you can retreat to and think about how to go forwards. Cool. As I opposed like to thing. running in guns blazing. So <laughs> jumping four shots, running in guns blazing would be a bad idea. Right, right, right. Um, all right, we're kind of, we're getting up to the last few minutes here. Is there anything that you want to tell all of the, your 400 or so viewers here, um, as far um, as how to support the game or what you want to tell them? I am putting the URL in right now. If you like what you see here, you can pre-order Hot Tin Roof at hottinroofgame.com as we speak. If you want to get in on the alpha copy, if you want to be able to play the demo you're seeing right here, right now, you can do a slacker backer option and become a slacker backer. <laughs> and then you'll get the backstage pass, which includes all alphas and all backstage pass chatter. The website explains all this. Otherwise, you can pre-order the regular game too. It's all through Humble Store, Humble Bundle things, so it's very trustworthy and very simple. I'm assuming you've seen the same thing on other insights. Pretty much the same thing here. And the game should release in May-ish on PC Mac Linux first. We are PC focused first. Well, PC Mac Linux focused first. It should also hit mobile, thanks to our friends, um, a, a different studio doing that. And we're thinking about a console release. We are talking with Microsoft, Sony, and maybe even Nintendo as to which one it hits and when all of that happens. That's still up in the air and depends a lot on things, but possible. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you for yeah. first for coming by and being a part of the show. We really appreciate it. No worries. Uh, hope the rest of it's cool and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and also, um, just so everybody knows, we're going to be doing game giveaways throughout this whole thing. And Megan has been super awesome and gave us some keys for.